The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble lumble. Lumble? Yeah. Ah, boy. Just got to take, sometimes you got to take a deep breath. Lovable and squeezably soft host. As always, we like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. As we start the show, we're off 17 and a, well, a little, almost 18 points on the S&P cash. Dow is off 194, the Nasdaq's off 40, and the Russell's down 10. When we look at uh, some of the other stuff, like crude off 27 cents, gold up six bucks, silver up, no, down a penny. Uh, so uh, we look at that, and then we go to the dollar index, take a quick look at, not much movement there, 96 62 is the last tick I show on there. And, of course, uh, we've had very light volume uh, the last couple of days. So it didn't look like we had much on the way up. Well, we don't have much on the way down either. Just 3.6 billion shares on the CBOE U.S. Market, ease, uh, market a Volume Summary. So, again, um, no volume up, no volume down. Few buyers higher, few sellers lower. Uh, there just isn't a lot to hang your hat on in this market uh, other than, is that it? Oh, there it is. I want an update. Yeah, down 18. So I want to make sure about that. Looking at a handful of other things as we start the show. Uh, and again, um, a lot of pressure on, uh, oops. On a handful of stocks, um, but uh, yeah, Boeing's still kind of hanging in there at the support level, 368. Although there's a lot of news on that one, so uh, we've got a lot of charts to look at. We're going to see how these stocks that couldn't uh, go higher yesterday uh, are going probably lower today. I've got a full list of them. Why don't we do a little history? Then we'll get to those charts fairly early on. And you can always give me a call at 877-927-6648. And, uh, yeah, let's do some history. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1865 in Adamox uh, Courthouse, Virginia, Appomattox, yeah, Appomattox, uh, Confederate General, Robert E. Lee surrenders his 28,000 troops to the Union General Ulysses S. Grant, effectively ending the American Civil War, forced to abandon the Confederate capital of Richmond, blocked from joining the surviving Confederate force in North Carolina, and harassed constantly by your, uh, Union cavalry. Lee had no other option but to surrender and end the war between the states, a one that Probably the most misnamed war in the world as a civil war. It just seemed to be, civil wars seem to be very uncivil. So I don't know about that. Uh, I always think whether or not it could happen again. And you always think about uh, people that are a little bizarre out there where the buses don't run, thinking that uh, whatever they got is so important. Uh, that it is worth the lives of others. You never know. Anyway, on this day in 1965, things could always be worse, like I, guess I like to say. Okay, we're going to get to charts. Uh, da -da -da. Okay. Apple, probably one of the more interesting stocks. And, of course, this thing came down and left a lot of gaps. But when we look at this, uh, let me move this around so I can see stuff. When we look at the gaps, we are right to it today on Apple. This is the 
uh, well, there's about five or six of them on the way down. Let's go back and look at those, zoom in. First gap down came on November 2nd. That was a huge one. That's about 10 bucks on that one. You gap down the next day, but you filled that gap on the 5th of November. Came back up uh, to the uh, 8th of November, gap down uh, the next day on the 9th. The 9th gap down over the weekend to the 12th. And now you've got all those gaps all set back up, but we're back into that line of gaps. Uh, the one on the uh, 12th is the one we're going into right now, which came down on 51 million shares uh, up today, uh, or actually pierced and filled half that gap, which I'm always a big fan of either selling in, if you're uh, playing the bounce, selling at half the gap, uh, or shorting it there. I don't know if I'm a big fan of shorting Apple. I think there are a lot weaker stocks out there, but 51 million shares to today's so far, 24 million shares. So figure uh, we extrapolate that out about 32, maybe 35 million shares by the end of the day on Apple. So it's going to come up pretty light for those people who were busy buying at the highs and uh, kissing the ground uh, for the opportunity to sell back at those highs once again. So what else do we have? Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, ADI, analog devices. We were looking at some of those SMHs that are a little uh, weak. Analog devices was certainly weak yesterday. Needed about five and a half million shares for that March 21st high. That was at 111.12. Got 4.6 million shares on that. Yesterday, you got into it with just 2.2 million shares. Today, again, no volume up, no volume down, just 840,000 so far. So we don't have enough to break on the upside. But again, most of these moves off the March 28th low had some fairly significantly lighter volume up to these highs. So lighter volume on the last leg up, lighter volume up there. This may just be one of these markets that rolls very, very slowly off that right shoulder. But uh, you know, we're going to have to see a lot more action before we uh, see the rest. Okay. American International Group. When we look at this one, it's been hitting highs, 8.7 uh, million shares on February 13th at 44.58. Got into 44.74 on February 26 with 10 million shares. Got into it two days ago with 4 million shares, yesterday with 2.2 million shares, today 1.6 million shares, so may have a little bit more volume than yesterday, but not a great deal. We talked about A uh, Akamai 2. Um, let's go back out here and look at this. Uh, da -da -da -da. Oh. I'll try that again. Come on, Mr. Akamai. Okay. Amberilla, maybe? Yep. Okay, we'll be back in a minute. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're right back, although I'm trying to eat because I had uh, a lot of stuff going on today. So anyway, we were talking about Apple. I wanted to look at some of these other ones. We looked at Akamai and uh, another day with very light volume. October 31st, $73.99, 4 million shares. Uh, got into that yesterday with 582,000 shares. And uh, up today a little bit on uh, 422,000 shares. So very, very light. Uh, Umbrella. We would look at that. Uh, certainly lighter also. Uh, you have this big gap down uh, from June 6 of 2018. It came down with about 11 million shares. Last few days, 440,000 shares, 272,000 shares. Yesterday, 225,000 shares. Today, 107,000 shares and a doji. So very, very quiet action. As I said, I haven't seen enough to tell everybody to go uh, short, uh, but at the same time, um, certainly doesn't look like we're going higher and not a real clue to going lower. Let's see uh, what else is going on here. Serious logic, we talked a little bit about this. Uh, the November 2nd high of 2018 had $43.25 with 2.8 million shares. Got into it with eh, 900,000 shares and rejected it on March 21st. Went down to $39.29 and then back up. Last couple of days, you've had 500,000, 500,000. Today, 140,000 shares so far. So again, just quiet, quiet, quiet. Uh, CV, uh, yeah, CVR Energy, we were talking a little bit about how I thought the energy stocks looked a little tapped out. We'll go look at the XLE in a minute. Uh, this one, CVR, uh, was a 35.95 on February 21st with 1.2 million shares. Got into it yesterday with 500,000 shares and instantly rejected it down today. Uh, not going to have huge volume, but certainly... 
a lot of these do look rather weak. Uh, CMEX, um, actually, um, this one's kind of bounced off the bottom. This was a big runner uh, back when everybody was planning on all kinds of stuff uh, for works in the United States, never did much. Donaldson, DCI, another one, not a huge volume stock, but at uh, February 25th, you had $52.67 with 570,000 shares. Yesterday, you got into it with 262,000 shares. Today, you're down with 121. So again, just not seeing that kind of juice. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, Delic Holdings, don't know much about this one other than it tested the uh, highs yesterday and did a big reversal and did have some volume. That may be one to want to take a look at. The uh, symbol on that is DK. DKS, which is Dick's Sporting Goods. Uh, also, a nice test of the previous March 1st high. That's $40.87 with 2.8 million shares. Got into it with 1.6 million shares yesterday. No real signal out here today so far. EV, Eaton Vance, uh, certainly looking at that. Triple top, looking to me, nice W formation. March 1st, this one had uh, $42.66 with one and a quarter million shares. Tried it on March 19th with 800,000 shares, tried it two days ago on 700,000 shares. Yesterday, 609,000 shares is pulled back a little bit. Today, lighter volume, 350,000 shares. So again, not we're rolling off that right shoulder, but not seeing the kind of volume that you might see. Uh, FAZ um, certainly looks like the financials may have seen uh, some kind of bottom in this uh, bear shares. 2.3 million shares back on March 19th at $8.80. Got into it with 1.8 million shares on April 5th. Up a little yesterday on 2 million shares. Today, 1.8 million shares are ready. So you've gone below that March 19th level. Closed back into the trading range. And uh, yes, I forgot to take a look at the, the uh, XLE. Uh, two, two, two. What else do you have? Um, this is uh, what I thought was one of the weaker sectors out here, the XLE. Mostly everybody thinking that there was problems uh, and not figuring out that it was the uh, move from winter to summer formula and all the rigs being shut down for a service as they do every six months or so. Um, December 3rd in the XLE. We saw $67.99 with 22 million shares. And, of course, yesterday we got into that, went above it, closed below it on half the volume uh, that we're off a little bit today. Not a big deal or not surprising, let me put it that way. Uh, you've got uh, 7 million shares now uh, compared to the 10 million shares. So I still suspect maybe we've got a little bit of hang time over here on the right-hand side of these charts. Uh, Fortress Biotech, uh, if there's a biotech that looks like maybe it's found some kind of support, is it anyone, uh, it is FBIO. Nice gap higher on the 31st of January. Uh, did that with um, 9.6 million shares. Back in and filling that gap with 127,000 shares today. I uh, tried back on March 6th uh, with 400,000 shares, but just no volume over here. On that one, uh, to, to GG Gold Corp uh, testing uh, the previous high, which is the February 26th high at $11.90, $11.72. That had uh, 23 million shares. We got into that yesterday with uh, 7.6 million shares. So not even half, uh, a third. I'm gonna go, yeah, a third of the volume yesterday for Gold Corp. Not a good sign and a doji, and a little bit of a pullback so far today. But uh, Gold Corp, pretty nasty looking uh, volume all the way up from the February 28th low. Goldman Sachs, the Goldman Sachs, as we talked about the last few days, uh, was challenging the previous high of March 19th at 
45. Got into that yesterday with 2.5 million shares. So about uh, what 700,000 shares light uh, down yesterday on 1.9 million shares. Today, 2. Point, man, what's called 1.3 million shares so far. So again, no volume off the top, no volume pushing the highs either though. So that is problematic in trying to find a position. Talked about this one yesterday, which is HP, Helmrich, and Payne. Uh, 1.4 million shares on the February 20th high, $58.49. So you had 1.4 million shares. You got 1.5 yesterday. So it actually did a little bit better. But uh, another doji out here today, 570,000 shares. Well, we got lots to go through. We're going to try to get through all of them today. Give me a call, 877-927-6648. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently. And if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN and you'll find the path of least resistance under trading newsletters. For all the details and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Plenty of time to call or email path at TFNN.com or put a message in the den as we go through a lot of these stocks uh, that are seeing a very light volume. ITT, uh, looking at uh, the last past high. Of November 2nd, where it spiked to 61.40, 1.8 million shares. Last couple of days, 862,000 shares today, just uh, 200,000 shares as we uh, get deep into the day. So, no real sign of a lot of weakness other than the fact that the prices are lower. And maybe this is a, a sign of something bigger coming, but we don't have a lot of confirmation yet. 
you like to see, you know, sellers abandoning ship. Doesn't always happen. Uh, we talked about maximum integrated products yesterday, another one in the SMHs, uh, going uh, for its 5.7 million share high of December 3rd. That was uh, 57.24. Got to 58.06, closed higher, but uh, only had 1.6 million shares. Uh, and, uh, of course, today you're back uh, into the trading range out here. So not looking good. A lot of these work looking fairly weak. We're going to need a catalyst to move forward. As we said, uh, tomorrow we get into options expiration. And then Friday, we actually have some earnings that might move the needle somewhat. And it may just be quiet before the storm of Friday. NXP semiconductors, another weak move uh, higher, but not giving up the ghost. February 25th, $98.20. Uh, 4.8 million shares got into it yesterday with 2.3 million shares today just 1.6 million shares so far as we go up against the gap pet iq yeah what do we have here certainly uh we've got eh, just bouncing on that that high roku was one that uh, i hadn't seen for a while or paid any attention to Again, this is one of like 40% short interest, and it's an IPO still being kind of manipulated by the underwriters. I always thought it was more of a GoPro kind of company. Eventually, it'd be back down to five or 10 bucks. Kind of hard to figure out exactly. Uh, the chart doesn't look as bad as you might think. This came up on 48 million shares on February 22nd, uh, and we're back into it yesterday with 24.5. And today, just a little um, hammer out here with uh, 11.5 million shares. And again, about the same volume as you got back into the March 14th lows also. Now, uh, let's take a look at a little bit of copper. Claude's Copper Clappers. You're a fan of Johnny Carson? I know you are. Uh, Southern Copper, SCCO, when we look at this one, $41.02 with 1.2 million shares. Uh, that goes back to the November 2nd high. Uh, we get into that uh, yesterday with 521,000 shares, down on 433,000 shares. So you may even have more volume by the end of the day uh, than you did on the upside yesterday. Um, Energy on the way back up is not as bad as some of the other stocks out there, but still fairly interesting. Okay. Skyworks Solutions. That's uh, got a nice spike on February 6th. We had, what, 9 million shares that day at 87.48. Got into that yesterday with 1.4 million shares. Today, a doji going sideways at 676,000 shares. Still no real confirmation on a lot of these, as we've said. Uh, you need to get some kind of signal uh, underneath one of these, either a nine-day moving average or, uh, or a three-by-three three displaced moving average, which is what I'm looking at. Uh, and, you know, you get three or four more days into this, and we could be hitting that and closing lower without doing much uh, upward movement in the markets, but not much to write home about just yet. Uh, at least no big signals, even if the market is down a little bit. Semantic uh, blew up on earnings back on May 11th, and that was at $18.62. It tested that a bunch of times and finally found some light volume uh, back on December 26th. Uh, it came back up here, and it's really been trying to fill this gap uh, at about 23, 24 bucks. And of course, uh, that day down, you came down on 112 million shares. Got a lot of people wanting their cash back on this one. And of course, the last few days, 11.6 uh, million shares, and today just 3 million shares so far. So, man, you are, I mean, at, I think at a dangerous place if the market got any really bad news. Uh, and I think that's where it's at. We don't have any volume yet, but if we had a catalyst for bad news uh, as, as the catalyst, 
uh, maybe there's enough to actually get some of these people uh, to actually sell something. Boya Financial uh, bouncing off its previous October 5th high, $52.34 for the 1.2 million shares. Yesterday got into it 573,000 shares. Today, down on 867. As I said, those financials look like they may turn. Uh, we talked about the XLE2. This one had a very weak leg back up off the December 26 low. I uh, stretched fairly far, pulled down today on 7 million uh, shares already compared to the 10.6 million shares you had yesterday. So not a real clear signal, no real break of a trend line yet. Uh, but as we take a look at these, it's only going to take about another buck or so on the downside to start probably actually getting into some selling. XOM, another one in the energy space that, uh, like I said, is kind of interesting uh, to me. Uh, and that is uh, you got about 17, actually two 17 million share highs. Uh, that goes back to November 8th and December 4th of last year for ExxonMobil. You peaked and turtled and prairie dog and stuck your head out like Ponce, Tawny, Phil uh, against those 17 million share highs with 9.1 million shares yesterday, right back into the trading range today she goes. So what do we got? I've got about a minute. I've got some uh, emails coming in, so let's take a look at those. Uh, why don't we take a quick look at Microsoft as the leader of the market, or it has been for a while. How close are we there to some kind of sell signal? Well, <clears throat> today, if you close down here, you're going to get it. Um, and this is where you can start seeing some selling come back in. As long as you close below, what is that? Uh, 119.51, you've got a sell signal. Now, I won't be shorting Microsoft. Uh, it's not going to come back that far. It might come back to 100, which I think would be a gift. Uh, it's super extended. Uh, and I think a lot of people just kept piling into it uh, because, of course, the uh, same thing with Apple, which is uh, if you want to run the market, just keep buying a few Apple shares every day if you're a big man on Wall Street. Everybody else is going to do it, too, give you opportunity to sell everything else uh, in the market. We're going to be back. We've got uh, one more big segment and then a little segment. We'll have fun. CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we are back. Back in the saddle again. Who was saying that? Back in the saddle again. Was that Steven Tyler? Yeah, I think it was. Aerosmith? I forget. Okay. Uh, question in the den is whether or not Microsoft can continue uh, growing. Um, I was installing a bunch of Microsoft stuff this morning. Uh, they've got their big uh, developer conference going on for the last few days already. And uh, I think it started on Sunday. Uh, released some new versions of some tools that I use uh, to write software. Uh, I tell you what, uh, they're doing literally everything they can. Um, you, you couldn't ask for a more night and day uh, version from the previous CEO to this CEO. Uh, there were some things that I'd love for them to change, and they're a little slow in some of the machine learning stuff that they have coming out. Uh, but, uh, you know, I used to pay, I don't know, 2400 bucks a year for a developer package uh, that I haven't had to pay for eh, since probably, what, 2012 or 2014 or something. Uh, and they make it all free, which they have to, to compete with all the Linux stuff. Uh, you know, if you're a big company with uh, more than a handful of people and you want to work together, the versions that do that very well uh, are expensive. But if you're a big company, you can afford it. And, of course, they do a lot of work. Uh, if you're not making an app for 5 million people but making an app for 10,000 people, it makes a lot of sense to, uh, if you're in the line of business kind of application uh, to continue doing it. And, of course, They've got a lot of stuff on their Azure website uh, that seems like almost every day they're advertising some kind of new connection, that they're putting the glue uh, to let you write applications fairly quickly and get uh, at least up and running to see what you might need further on. So uh, they may pull back. I think that they will still probably outperform the rest of their peers, especially in software. Um, the big problem, I think, that everybody, the big problem that Microsoft has is that they're in bed, whether they like it or not, with all the other FANG stocks like Facebook. And these guys, uh, man, they have, let's take a quick look at that. Um, Google, Facebook, these guys are going to just get creamed um, eventually on taxes and uh, reg, uh, regulations, and they don't seem to care. Um, seems more about the next quarter than what's going to happen in a year from now. Uh, if there's two companies that have avoided a lot of the pitfalls, um, it's Amazon and Microsoft, the political, um, the political uh, issues. So. You know what? I don't, you know, it's hard for me to say that anything else is going on. Uh, they're just going to, I think if the Microsoft pulls back, it's going to pull back with the rest of the market. Uh, they still are probably going to outperform. 
or come back less than the rest. But could I see Microsoft back to 100 bucks? Hey, if the market pulls back far enough, right now, there's no volume on the downside. So it's hard to actually start saying, hey, uh, and, uh, and waving flags that a long-term top is in. Um, you know, I think we probably are just waiting for Friday and waiting for earnings to come in. And there's uh, a lot of indecision up here at the highs. And, of course, you never know what the uh, Treasury Secretary or the president's going to tweet or say uh, to maybe finally get that kind of juice to actually break through these highs. So a lot of people are more than willing to sit on their hands for a handful of days as we pull back. In fact, let's go back and look and see what's happening uh, in the uh, rest of the market. Uh, so we're off 19 on the S&P cash. Again, pulling back, probably not a big um, surprise with the incredibly light volume that we talked about both on Friday and yesterday throughout the day. There just wasn't any uh, real desire to go higher. But again, you know, 20 points off on the S&P cash, not a big deal. The Dow, of course, weighing under Boeing somewhat. Uh, NASDAQ's off 40, 41. On a normal day, we wouldn't think anything more about this. Uh, and again, we've got options uh, delta neutral tomorrow. So if they push this down early in the morning tomorrow, I'm going to look for probably some kind of reversal for later in the day. Of course, uh, 8 out of 10 options expirations uh, will close higher than the high of tomorrow. There's always about a 1.5% one, one bullish bias on average into options expiration. If the market starts to pull back, uh, it's also generally a, a outlier event in which the downside is much greater uh, than the general uh, average upside. So generally, you know, you only get two out of 10 that go down over, I don't know, 30, or 30 40 years or whatever. Uh, but uh, when they go down, they go down about three times uh, the size that the average uh, upside is into uh, options expiration, which is the, what, the 21st of this month? I think it is. Is that the right date? Uh, to do, okay, 19th. So you got, you know, tomorrow options delta neutral from the 19th at the actual expiration. But, uh, you know, you've got to have a fairly compelling case to go short uh, in April. I've seen markets like this many times hold up all the way to March 1st and then start seeing the selling come back in. Uh, can you thank uh, Buffett, Gates, Bezos, and their army of lieutenants for what you observe? Uh, oh, I can thank them, I guess. That's a statement. Okay. But, uh, uh, you know, I, he, Jeff Bezos uh, self-inflicted wounds. And uh, Microsoft, they're the squeaky clean bunch. Uh, no accounting fraud, no lots of uh, turmoil uh, in the uh, executive ranks. Uh, not a lot of questions like Oracle, uh, where you might have uh, somebody shoot their mouth off one day, uh, but certainly problematic. I do have a question uh, to look at Cisco. We'll do that real quick. CSCO. Do, 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 do. Okay. Well, you don't have much in this. Again, you're wanting some kind of break and you want some kind of volume coming in. Yesterday, uh, almost 14 million shares. You got about 10 million shares so far today. What we've we got left? We've got about an hour and 10 minutes left. So not much to scream about on that. Uh, let's look at some of the other big high flyers. NFLX. As we look at that one. Uh, man, just uh, it looks like Again, sideways action up a little bit today, but again, a um, little higher low on March 28th, a little lower high on April 3rd. You're just in a trading range. Waiting for earnings is my call. We'll be back in a minute.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And uh, he said he looked at Netflix a little bit. Again, up a little on a bad day. I don't think the lot's going on in that. Uh, Amazon.com uh, did break through, but we certainly haven't had anything uh, like we're looking for. We wanted about uh, 7 billion shares just to tie over the last few days as it broke higher. Uh, four days ago, 3.7 million shares. Three days ago, 3.7 million shares. Yesterday, 3.8 million shares. Today, just 2.7 million shares going kind of a little bit sideways. Again, um, I think you probably want to see, you know, you're right at the top of this big uh, candle down that goes back to October 10th. Is that right? I want to say that's it. Yeah, October 10th. Uh, it was down on 11 million shares. So two, three million shares, probably just not going to cut it. Um, so we're kind of at the top of this range. Maybe we get a pullback on light volume and then the next range we can actually see some volume up there, break those highs. Uh, maybe a lot of these stocks start uh, breaking down by the end of the day, close back below some kind of trend line in these things, and actually get some sell signals on them. But a uh, eh, handful of them, yes. A whole lot of them, no. Um, so we're kind of in this no man's land where uh, we're waiting for signals to act. And it's probably not prudent to uh, get a little too far ahead of those signals as slow as the market's 
going, as they say, you don't want to be short a quiet market. Uh, and uh, certainly a quiet market generally has light volume. So uh, we'll look at those. Anyway, uh, as we close the show, down 19 on the S&P 500. Over there. Yeah. Down 19, Dow's off 204. NASDAQ's down 37, and the Russell off about 12. Waiting for earnings on Friday, most likely. We'll be back tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Tell when you can, not when you have to. <laughs>